Uh, yeah, Coach, what will be some of the things you all be trying to get accomplished here at this stadium practice today? Yeah, it's just a lot of things. Um, all right, sorry about that. I know you're out of mic. Stop, dirty birds! There we go. So, there's a lot of we're trying to accomplish, you led. A lot of these young guys, their first exposure down here in the stadium. You know, it's, it's a continue, it's a non-contact, it's a passing camp. There's a lot of things we're working on, trying to, trying to push some new things, letting these guys fight through some mistakes. And uh, we're just excited to be down here. Hey, Coach, your third iteration of being down here, what's a little bit different for you for this third time? Oh, this is, a, in my biased opinion, the best stadium in the league. So okay. when you come, come down here, that was obviously a huge charge of ours was to, to be better at home. We got a little bit better last year. So we were 6-3, and three, lost three games kind of down at the wire. Um, we got to continue to improve that because our – and that's what it's about. We're, we're going to create this home field advantage. Everybody's going to do their part. And you could feel it at times last year. We expected to take another level, up another notch. And uh, so that, that's really it. And obviously, first year we were pretty good on the road, not good here. And then last year we were better at home and we weren't very good on the road. This year our intent would be better at both, but certainly at home we, we, we have to be. When you talk about the home field advantage, how valuable is it to get the rookies, especially just exposed to this stadium? And what kind of advantage does that provide you guys just like moving it's a, forward? It's a huge advantage. We, we, we want to make it hard for other teams. We want to be comfortable in here. So, you know, every organization has different setups and most people don't practice in their home stadium every day. But the more familiar we are, the, just the spacing, the lighting. I mean, it may sound silly to some, but it, it matters to certain people, especially in the kicking game. Uh, we love it down here especially being right in the city. So we're excited any opportunity we get to come down here. And I apologize, I'm ducking the lighting. It's like, I can't see you if I... <laughs> <laughs> when you have an offense that's potentially as young as yours might be in right. terms of starters, how does, that poten how does that maybe change, not necessarily what you'll do, but your philosophy, your thought process in, in maybe coaching them or what you even yeah. do on the field? It's a, it's a good question. You know, we, we, we're not going to baby people when they come in here. And, I, and I'm not saying that derogatory. You know, philosophically, we're going to make it really hard. We're going to see who can handle failure. And that's a big part of it. And it's harder than ever. You know, I'll give J.J. Watt a lot of credit. There was something he said yesterday that was really true about playing through mistakes. You're going to have hard. It's the National Football League. It, you know, it's the, it's the best of the best. And if we want to push the limits, you've got to be OK with failure. You've got to be OK. We're working on a new route and the ball sails and somebody posts online and you get the tier one Twitter warriors commenting on it that are sitting living life through their screen. It doesn't matter. Like, so we, we got to be okay with that. You know, it, 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 if you can't deal with that and don't have that perspective, this probably isn't the job for you. And so we put a lot on them because if we feel like we baby them, we're not getting them ready to play on Sunday. It's going to be really hard September 10th. And so for guys, the first time, we got to get to train them for the job they're going to do. And so we, we believe in that. This is non-contact, but there's a lot of things we want to push the limits to and make it tough on them, especially mentally. It's about mental con conditioning as well. So we're really excited, and that's why it matters, the type of players we bring in here. And uh, it's been a fun group to work with so far. Well, when you guys were constructing this, right. was some of the youth offensively by design, or was that just? Well, it just certainly, I mean, when you invest – and high draft picks that way, right? Those guys are young. Not only are they young, in terms of rookies, they're young in age. Kyle, Drake, Bijan, all these guys are pretty young in age, too. Um, so the, the money's going to go somewhere. We didn't have money, right? I mean, it's, it's like it's a pie. Where are you going to split it up? So where are you going to invest? Well, right now, our offensive line's a little bit older. Chris is on a second contract, Caleb. Jake's obviously had a couple deals. So. That's where a lot of the money is. We've got a quarterback on a rookie deal. We've got a, a backup that's on a you know mid-level veteran deal, I guess, what do you want to call it? And then we've got some young receivers. We've got a lot of guys. Um, you know, the deals we made that are pretty, you know, where it fits in the pie. Like, we're happy as hell we have Jono and Matt Collins. How we got them and where they fit. And, and get Cordero Hodge back, Scotty, you know, Scotty Miller. So, like, Money's got to go somewhere, and then a lot, of it's, a lot of it's on the veteran on the defense, and that's just the way it goes. So you have to plan for that, be a year out, two years out, and, uh, you know, certainly that's going to change, right? Once you put a quarterback on that contract, 
Well, that's going to allocate someone from the old line, or where, you're going to take it from somewhere. Coach, how beneficial has it been for your veterans to show up in the OTA process, and what's successful today getting oh. you guys out of their natural environment? Well, it's, it's not whether they're here or not. You know, I said this last week. I, I think I forget who asked me, D. Ladder, Josh, but you're going to make the team in August. We obviously love having guys here. There's a couple guys today that we'll hold back. There's a guy, a couple that have some family things that came up because we did push the week back. Coming off Memorial Day weekend, we actually went a day later than that because usually that Tuesday after Memorial Day is one of the worst OTAs I've been in charge, I've been around. Historically, people getting the poison out from the weekend, so we kind of moved that back. And um, so we are working on Friday. It's nice to come out here on Friday. So we have a lot of guys here. Some guys were holding back, some of these other guys, but we have guys that we trust. Or we wouldn't sign them. Like so. Of course, you love having people here. We're coaches. We love that. But big picture, it doesn't matter. We, we mean what we say and say what we mean. So, like, it is voluntary. We've had great attendance. But that everybody has a different routine. People are in different parts of life. Like, you know, Clayus is 50 years old. So he's going to, you know, he's got his own thing, right? He's got grandkids. So he's going to come out. And he's got his process. But I promise you, just like when he was here last week, he's in phenomenal shape. And he's going to get there because he's a pro's pro. CP, those guys, there's a trust factor. So that doesn't, you got the right guys, that doesn't bother me. The guys that are here, there's strategically what we want to work on. It's awesome, and we've had great attendance. Coach, you talk about that infusion of experience over here. Hey, how you I doing? The lights right in my All face. Right. I can barely see it. The, the infusion of experience that you've had this offseason. Talk about what it allows you to do a little different during these OTAs and then going into camp yeah, in maybe I, the first two years. Yeah, I mean, whether, there's a lot of things, right? You know, philosophically, we're trying to adapt. I mean, we're not going to change our core values the, the way we want to play. We'll change schematically to fit our strength or where we think we what we need to defend or the trends going on. You know, that you've got to be aware of that. And so we're excited about it. But certainly, that's what we do what we do now. So we see, test our rules, what, what we philosophically, how we want to play going into the training camp and as the season goes on. Uh, that experience helps. But, the, but when you have a lot of new players, which you're going to have every year, they need that communication. They need the gel. So the more exposure we have together, the better it is for us. Yeah, Coach, um, how has uh, Goldman been doing as he's been trying to, you know, come back out of retirement and so forth? Yeah, I mean, it's so different than the better players. You know, there's players that miss the 20 season. Guys, you know, they get an injury early in the season. There's a, there's a return to play plan that we've been in contact with Eddie. If we didn't trust Eddie, we wouldn't have kept him. Uh, we're excited, you know, but we got to make sure we're smart about that return to play. Like when you've missed that amount of time, you can't go all of a sudden expect to play 100 plays the first practice of training camp. So there's a progression there. We're aware. Uh, we're constantly looking at that D-led. No different than guys coming off an injury. You know, it'll be a plan for TQ. Kyle, you know, we're trying to be smart. We know we're planning to play 20, 21 games. So when you do that, we need to be ready to go peaking, you know, ready to roll September 10th, and we need to be playing our best football at the end of the year. So that, so that goal is in mind. So with all our players, we have different plans. So, and uh, we'll be smart with Eddie, but we're excited that he's still here. What has Ryan Nielsen been doing, or maybe what has he brought to the table that's laying kind of a different foundation for this defense than this time maybe last year or the year before that? A different team, you know. Uh, it's like we knew the plan and, and we knew we we're going into 2023. We were going to attack this and, and add in certain spots on the defense. I think Dean every day has buyer's remorse and retired and sees uh, some of the moves we make. But uh, no, Ryan's a phenomenal football coach and, and the teaching that we're doing and Jerry Gray bringing into the program and Dave Huxtable, even Mike Gray that's doing a lot of our quality control. Uh, fantastic young coach. And when you have the right climate environment, you're trying to problem solve and evolve. And uh, we have that as a staff. We know the big picture every day. We're not sitting there trying to win the narrative of the day. It's like, oh, we got you. We're trying to make each other better We're philosophically in, in the teaching progression and development. And uh, been very pleased so far. The defensive staff's doing a terrific job. When it comes to Kyle Pitts, just where is he in the recovery process? I know you said training camp, but how is he progressing so far? I'm not putting a date on that. 
we didn't put a date on Mike's knee injury, so everybody's different. He's back, so um, again, we fully anticipate, you know, hopefully nothing happens training camp, I mean, but we fully anticipate everybody being ready, ready to go September 10th, and so we'll be smart. I mean, the guys that are 10-plus year vets will have different plans. They may not be out there every day. It might, depending on them, but we feel pretty good about the health, you know, that Caleb Huntley is. It doesn't do me any good to tell you whether Caleb Huntley is ahead of schedule or behind schedule. I don't know what that means. I mean, you have, depending on what doctor, right, you talk to five different opinions, they may give you the super, super conservative, and somebody may give you an aggressive one, but everybody's body's different, so I feel pretty good about where we're going to be when we need to line up and play on September 10th.